Hi, I'm Lef. Today, we're going to talk about integer limits. To understand what an integer limit is, we first need to know what an integer is. An integer is a whole number. It's not a fraction. The number 1 is an integer. The number 7 is an integer. The number 152 is also an integer. An integer can be a negative number or a positive number. So, is there a such thing as the smallest or largest integer? Mathematically, there is no smallest integer because there will always be one number less. What is also true is that there will be no largest integer because there will always be one number more. We can say then that the integer range is anywhere from negative infinity to positive infinity. But in computer software engineering terms, there usually is a limit believe it or not. In computer language, an integer is often a primitive data type. Since practical computers have finite capacity as opposed to handling infinite numbers, there are imposed limits on the range of numbers that computer software could process. The appearance of the number often reflects an error that occurred, or an overflow condition, or a missing value. For example, according to Google, in December 2014, the music video Gangnam Style had exceeded the 32-bit integer limit for a YouTube view count. That means more people viewed the video than YouTube could process in its program software. This necessitated YouTube to upgrade their counter to a 64-bit integer. So for software programmed to a 32-bit integer limit, the number 2,147,483,647 is the maximum positive value for a 32-bit sign binary integer and the maximum possible score, money count, or range limit for many video games. Another example projected into the future would be the way that time has been programmed in operating systems such as Unix. Unix time is a system for describing a point in time or the UTC standing for Universal Time Coordinated. The UTC is the number of seconds that have elapsed since the Unix epoch. When this was established, the Unix epoch was 0 hours, 0 minutes and 0 seconds UTC on midnight January 1st, 1970, the start of the Unix epoch. This is often implemented as a 32-bit integer. The latest time, therefore, that can be represented in this form is 3.14.07 UTC, meaning 3.14 and 7 seconds PM on Tuesday, January 19, 2038, which corresponds to 2,147,483,647 seconds since the start of the epoch. This means that computer systems using a 32-bit time type are prone to the year 2038 problem. This could cause problems for computers that use 32 bits of data to store time values. The problem arises one second after this time, when it's anticipated that the number will be set to zero and will then be represented as a negative time. Depending on how the computer has been programmed, this could either crash the system or count backwards from the epoch. Does anyone remember Y2K? Just the older people, I guess. A solution to this Y2038 problem would be to store the time in the 64-bit number, which will not reset until 9 quintillion, 223 quadrillion, 372 trillion, 36 billion, 854 million, 775,807 seconds have elapsed. In other words, millions of years. Most 64-bit computers already store the time in a 64-bit number or can be configured to do so. The more practical 64-bit integer limit number is not infinite, but can be recorded as a minimum value of negative 9 quintillion, 223 quadrillion, 372 trillion, 36 billion, 854 million, 775,808 and a maximum value of 9 quintillion, 223 quadrillion, 372 trillion, 36 billion, 854 million, 775,807. I can't wait for the introduction of the 128-bit integer limit, but we don't have time for that right now since this will require a much lengthier discussion. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. See you in a bit, or should I say, 128 bits.
Bye for now.